Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. Tonight we are back with a brand new episode and review of Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 3, Episode 2. Let me just give a disclaimer. Last week it was some ignorance all up and through my comment section. Uh, they have now been blocked, okay? But um, please do not personally attack me and my character about any of these people in Huntsville or you will follow suit, okay? I'm giving you my unbiased opinion. If you don't like it, I said what I said and I ain't changing it. Moving forward. Child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. If you are new here, then welcome. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. I give lighthearted reviews with an entertaining twist, a little bit of laughter, and a little bit of shade. Child, when the episode first opens up, Kimmy goes to visit Maurice. The office looking nice, Maurice. Okay, I see you got it together. And she says she wants to put her and Tisha's mess in the past, but she wants to run it by Maurice to make sure she ain't tripping and isn't, okay? So she's telling him about the talk that she had with Tisha and was wondering why Tisha wanted to confront her about some things, but I've overheard how you've been talking about me and things you've been saying about me behind my back. So Kimmy was a little bit confused, right? Tisha on the other side, she's talking to Marceau, telling him about her party, saying it was so nice and that there was only one person missing and that was her mom. And she's like, but you know what? Then I realized that my mom wasn't at the event and it was so nice because she wasn't there. No drama. No Miss Wanda equals no drama. No drama, no more drama in my life. Shout out to Mary J. Blige. Honey, Tisha, listen to me, okay? We all know that Miss Wanda likes to get it started. <laughs> now, I was thinking about this last week, and I really think that production gave Miss Wanda the wrong call time. I do not believe that Miss Wanda was out of town, honey. Miss Wanda is not going to miss an opportunity to step on the scene with them purple pin curls in her hair and set the place off. Okay, they probably told Miss Wanda they were filming in Vegas, honey, and they was really in Huntsville. Child, y'all ain't fooling me. <laughs> so why's she doing all that talking over there to, you know, to Marceau when she's finally had an aha moment that Miss Wanda can get the party started? She tells Marceau, you know, she had a conversation with Kimmy and she basically told her, you know, just make it plain. She said, just tell me what your issue is. And she said, I gave her an example. And then she said, now this is the part that tripped me out, honey. Y'all please help me. And then she told me when people said I was a home wrecker and I was having an affair with Maurice while he was married, nobody came to my defense. The way she worded it and split it up, to me, it sounded like she was saying, when I was having an affair with Maurice, nobody came to my defense. Is that just me? Like I had to rewatch it over and over to see if I was comprehending it right. And I'm just like, Tisha, did you just say she had an affair with him while he was married? Or are you saying, we're gonna really have to get Tisha some speech therapy or something, cause this is just ridiculous. I was trying to figure out if she was saying it like that or if she was saying when people were implying that I was having an affair with Maurice while he was married, nobody had my back. Tisha, girl, you're too old for this. This is ridiculous. Honey, I remember the rumor that people were saying, honey, the streets were talking, Kimmy, and they were saying, honey, <laughs> y'all were more than friends. And then you slid on in there while Kaya was, had her back turned. I mean, that's what the people are saying, allegedly. But when Tisha was saying it, I felt like she was wording it in a way where she was confirming it, honey, and I wouldn't put it past her. So Tisha said, you know, I gave her my expectation of the relationship. And if she can't abide by that, then it is what it is. Tisha, now listen to me. I really have tried to overlook what y'all going through with this foolishness because it really is getting on my nerves and it ain't making me no never mind. But at the same time, girl, what are you talking about? Your expectations of the friendship? Okay, you cannot have a one-sided friendship. You gonna have to pull your weight as well. Okay, now I'm gonna give an unbiased opinion about everybody. Okay, I don't care who it is, unless it's Martell, because he can go to hell. But other than that, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel in that moment. And Tisha, what you're saying is making absolutely no sense, okay? What you basically want her to do is, no matter what you say, ride for you. Whether you lie, whether you steal, whether you kill, whether you rob a bank, Kimmy better be on board. That is what you're saying, okay? I'm really starting to see you for you, Tisha. Now, don't do that, honey, because I want to like you. I want to like all of y'all, but I just got to call a spade a spade. So Marceau said, you know, women's relationships are stressful. No, really they're not, okay? Mature women can get along great. Effective communication, security within oneself, honey, it all works. That helps. 
Over at Maurice's office, he's telling Kimmy that if Tisha wants her to show up as anyone other than Kimmy, well, then she's in for a rude awakening. <laughs> And Kimmy said, you know, what's so funny is I actually said that I told her, you know, you want me to change to fit what you want me to be. And she's like, absolutely. So then Kimmy basically said, honey, I am who I am and I ain't changing it. Child, I'm just, why should you have to change to be friends with someone? That's not a friendship. Friends accept you for who you are. So honey, if you can't accept me for me, then child kick rocks. So Marceau was like, well, it seems like they came to the party with a mission and she was like who is they and what mission he's like uh you know operation check marceau so then they flash back to her brother asking about another kid right well marceau now honey they were saying over there in the mother blogs that you know you had an outside kid okay that's what they're saying allegedly now do i personally think marceau has another child no i do not do i think that marceau has creeped yes allegedly okay you're not as sloppy as martel but i still feel like you were giving us a little bit of tlc so i creep yeah i just keep it on the down low shout out to tlc honey i definitely felt like you was giving very much t-bars realness i'm just saying child so then tisha said you know that's that social media stuff i don't know why people believe social media he said well you know if you did that i would forgive you boy shut up <laughs> I can't stand Marcel sometimes. I really cannot. She said, oh, well, that's good to know because I would never. Honey, I know that's real. She said, if you had an outside baby, I would divorce you and take everything you have. Now, Tisha, honey, you ain't gonna bust a grape, okay? I don't think Tisha will be strong enough to do that. I feel like she gonna stick beside him. Now, that's just my opinion. But now, Miss Wanda, baby, Miss Wanda will make sure that Marcel suffers. Do y'all hear me? Marcel will never sleep again. <laughs> Baby, Miss Wanda would be like, I'm at your front door. Let me tell you something. Miss Wanda old school. You will not have no outside baby on her and think you're just going to skip off into the sunset. See, Mar Martell got away easy because he didn't have a mother-in-law like Miss Wanda. Now, see, male mama, she more classy based. But Miss Wanda, baby, she about their life. Over at Mel's house, we are back to OG Mel with the short cut and the long bang. Girl, once again, I was like, child, she done brought that bang back. Once again, Martel shows up being himself, which makes everybody's skin crawl. But um, she says she's going to be playing it cool because he's coming to get the kids. So Martel shows up. He said, like, this is the first time me being inside, honey. Step outside. <laughs> as soon as he stepped in, she was like, can I talk to you for a minute? So they go outside to talk, right? He said, every time, you know, I come to get the kids, it's a mess. Mel, I always want to have a sidebar. Well, honey, it's a lot of things that transpire between the time that you get them and then two or three weeks later when you bring them back because you are always with the foolishness so she said you know i just want to talk about the kids custody respect you know social media and he's like well i feel like i don't even look at your social media so i'm trying to figure out why you look at mine martel we see the way that you behave on this show so i know that you are watching her social media and if you're blocked you're watching it from a burner account. Honey, I know. That's the kind of man you are, child. So she starts talking about how he lies about not coming to get them. And then she sees him as an, at an event, right? And he's like, why are you even watching my social media? Honey, you're lying. Okay, I want you to come pick your kids up. It's my weekend to get it popping. He said, oh, like when you say you're sick and then you end up in Georgia? Well, child, both of y'all doing whatever y'all doing. It goes both ways. He said, even with the social media post, she called him cussing him out and told him to remove it. And she he was she was like, you don't have to remove the post. And he took a little bit of accountability in this moment, just a little bit. And he said, you know, I didn't really think that it was wrong initially, but it's still so new. So, you know, I just shouldn't have posted anything about it yet. OK, OK. Ooh, child. OK, so we got a little bit of something. Martel said, you know, I know she's upset that I referenced my other child, but we have to move on. Uh, this is true, but the womb is still fresh. Okay, just be mindful. That's all I'm going to say on that, honey. Just be mindful. So then Mel said, you need to stop disrespecting me. You went on a whole tour to slander my name. And honey, not Dr. Heavenly, the first flashback. <laughs> Child Dr. Heavenly going to stay in some mess if she don't do nothing else. She probably at home like Nene. Now, how did I get into it, honey? Because you interviewed Martel, child. She said, even Funky Dineva said you called him. Child, not the Funky Bunch, child. Martel, now, you can't sit up here and lie because I remember watching that live, honey, when it was live in action. And 
Funky said that you called him, okay? Q ain't gonna lie on you now. You definitely did call him, okay? And he was like, well, I called him when you were on that line. She had not even spoken your name yet and you were already ding, 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 calling every five damn minutes. What is wrong with you? Boy, goodbye. So they argue and then she said, you know, I feel like we should go to counseling and we should at least get a mediator. Well, honey, that's a step. So mama in the house, right? And you know, Martel trying to get a hug and mama looking like, boy, don't touch me. Honey, mama is like, please do not put your paws on me. I know that's right, mama. I don't know where them hands been. So she gets started on how Martel has been moving. And she's like, we can, we need to have a talk. He said, no, you know, I, I just was responding to the negativity that was given to me. So then mama hits him with a, well, I, you know what? Don't even worry about it. I don't even want to talk to you anymore. He's like, kids, y'all can come on. Your grandma gave me the hand. Martel, grow up. They did not need to know that. See, this is what they're talking about right here. So then Martel said he had to go because he may say something he may or may not regret. Child, I wish, it, let me tell you something. If Martel was my ex-husband and he came out of his face saying he was about to get rid of disrespect to my mama, baby, it'll be a whole nother set of issues. I could, I don't see, oh, I do not see how Mel can stomach him. If we can't stomach him for an hour, and 15 minutes worth of commercials. How can she stomach him for 18 more years? Child, somebody let me know. So Maurice pulls up and Monster is playing basketball outside. I hate the name Monster. But he is growing into a handsome young man. I was like, look at him. Okay, growing up. So Maurice said, you know, he's going into high school. So he needs to get acclimated to being a young adult. Honey, he needs to get up off his butt and do something with himself. So they go inside and Kimmy's sitting there and they sit down with her and she wants to know what his summer plans are. He said, you know, I want to work mowing lawns. She's like, haul them up, swallow them up. You know, she ain't say that, but y'all know I like to zhuzh it up. She said, um, let me look at the unmowed lawn outside. Well, honey, he didn't, y'all not paying. Okay, <laughs> y'all ain't paying. So if you ain't paying, he ain't cutting, y'all. So, but my thing is this, at least he had a plan. Okay, because Kimmy, now Jalen, your son, he ain't know what he wanted to do at his big grown age. So child, let this little boy get his entrepreneurial spirit on, girl. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna get a ride and more. Maurice says, so you wanna work without working? Well, honey, that's the plan. I don't see a problem. Let me tell you something. I'm going to encourage my child to work smarter and not harder, okay? Baby, that's how the others make it to the top, if y'all know what I mean. It's more than one way to skin a cat. One key to building a business is to create a solution. Now, they didn't say how the yard had to be cut. They just said that they needed to cut. And that's what he's going to be doing. Nobody trying to push a mower, honey. This ain't leave it to beaver. So then they start talking about what school he wants to go to when he finally decided. So they called his mom to tell her, right? She's like, well, why did you choose that? He said, you know, because Micah's going there, which is one of his cousins. Kimmy's sitting over in the background and she's like, hey, you know, I'm here as well. And then she tells her about a graduation party for all the cousins graduating from the eighth grade, right? She said, you know, Maurice likes to act like I'm invisible. So since he does that, I just interject whenever I feel like it. Now me, quite frankly, I would not want to be involved in their conversation. That's their child together. Now, if it has something to do with me, then I will insert myself. But otherwise, honey, y'all set yourself off. So Kaya says she wants all of them to get together to talk. So then Kimmy said, well, you know, last time we talked, she lied on me saying I slept with her husband when everybody knows that's not true. And nobody had my back, including Tisha. Okay, Kimmy, honey, please don't turn into Tisha with this. Nobody had my back. Girl, we don't care, child. Let's keep moving. Let's move forward. So Maurice was like, okay, I think that's a good idea. And Kimmy said, yes, I think it's long overdue. Child, good luck. Moving forward. Over at Melody S. Holt Incorporated, her friend Tiffany is stopping by. Baby, Tiffany gonna be a messy boots. Do y'all hear me? Tiffany is coming to get the shit started. Okay? And I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. So Mel was letting us know that she met her seven years ago and she does a lot um, in the community. And they talk about her having her wedding or whatever. And Mel's like, yeah, you know, I'm still learning to love myself after that terrible shim sham of a marriage, honey. Child. So Mel is like, you know, it's great to have someone that shares similar experiences so she can help you get through and, you know, y'all can talk through it. So she's asking her advice on how to be a great parent and business mogul all at the same time, not to mention a single mom. And she wants to hire interns from HBCU. So I'm like, okay, Mel, I see you, honey, trying to get the work for the free. <laughs> not intern, making it sound real snazzy. So they 
come on in and do some work and don't get not a lick of pay honey i see exactly what you're doing you know what you were definitely the brains behind the operation so then mel invites erica as her plus one to destiny's birthday dinner or brunch or whatever they have but it has to do with destiny and her birthday <sighs> this is the thing i have a thing about uninvited people at personal celebrations for me okay because it can go real wrong i might not vibe with your plus one okay and everybody don't get along and i don't like people messing up my my moment my time to shine okay you're gonna have to run that by me first run all guests by me before you just bring somebody honey last time when miss wanda was a plus one and was brought to Jalen's party all hell broke loose so you have to make sure that you ask people instead of just inserting them but this is you know reality tv honey and carlos king with the foolishness so we know how that goes in the next scene, Martel goes to Chris's house and he said he got flashbacks going to the backyard. He was like, oh, I hope Mel ain't back there. Honey, well, we all know you wish she was, okay? It makes you think about how you wore that drink, don't it? <laughs> Baby, Mel doused him with that drink so good. Honey, he didn't stand a chance. Chris is in the back studying to get his builder's license, right? So they're chopping it up about that for a minute. And so he tells Martel that the 47 acres closed. He said, um that's kind of why i asked you to come over so the developer told me to ask mel if she had her license and would be interested in building now prior to this martel was saying how he didn't pass his test for his builder's license okay just keep that in mind so they wanted to go to mel to see if she wanted to build and he said you know she told him that it was martel's passion and to run it by him so martel said I would think that you as my friend will come to talk to me as well anyway. Martel, please take note, honey, that Mel could have just said okay, as I would have, okay? And did what she wanted to do because y'all aren't married, but she said ask you. Just take note because, you know, you like to lie and claim that she didn't have your back and she was trying to go behind your back and get the deal and you brought the deal to the table. You know how you like to do, okay? So then in Martel's confessional, he was like, what is Chris thinking? He shouldn't have even taken that question to her. That's my ex-wife. That's my family. Martel, go away, honey. Go away. Nobody owes you anything. Didn't you just say you didn't have a license? Honey, an X is the operative word. So Holt and Holt was afloat because of her license. Honey, you should have been studying instead of sleeping around, honey. And then you would have your builder's license. Child, anyway. So Martel said, well, you know, I teamed up with someone that has a license. Chris said, well, the client wanted her point blank and the period the client asked for her. And that's all that's going to be said here today. So Martel, this is the bottom line. You feel like everybody owes you something. OK, your name is messy. Nobody wants their brand attached to your foolishness. And it's called favor. <laughs> it's called favor, honey. Clearly, they know who the brains was. I'm just saying. He said, so you're getting your license. Are you thinking about building on it as well? He was like, well, it did cross my mind. So then Martel going to say, oh, I see you. You want to team up with my ex-wife. Child, he going to forever claim mail. Child, please let it go. It's that ex, okay? It's not your woman no more, honey. It's done. Child, in the divorce, I guess Mel kept the friends. So Martel said, I feel betrayed. They smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. The backstabbers. Honey. <laughs> Martel said he's been backstabbed. This man is crazy. Do y'all hear me? Honey, it's the delusions for me. So Chris was like, look, I'm looking at it from a business standpoint. Martel said, you're taking money out of my pocket. You can't look. Listen to me, Martel. You cannot be mad that the client wanted someone with a license already in place. So he's like, I feel like I brought the buyer and Chris together. So he should have mentioned it first. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that Chris should have gone? Now it was a little bit messy. Don't get me wrong. But do y'all think that Chris should have gone to Martel first and said, hey, no, and Martel ain't got a lick of a license. Okay. And said, hey, despite them saying they wanted to work with Mel, I thought I'd bring it to you first since you brought the business to me. Or do you think that Chris should have did what he did and he ain't changing it? Honey, please comment down below. So in the next scene, Mel and her red hair meet up with Martel and his antics for therapy and his tight britches. I'm like, boy, you could tell Martel ain't really working with nothing, honey. You cannot tuck and fold and tie your stuff in a bow to put them tight britches on. Boy, probably ain't working with nothing allegedly so he's like uh oh you red now she said yeah well you know word is you put me on the blonde so i switched it up <laughs> i 
no, that's right, Mel, honey. Hit him with the subtle petty shade, honey. So then they hugged. And I was like, oh, that's mature, honey. That's growth. But let me tell you something. Me and my ex could never. <laughs> when I say never, honey, counseling is cool. Don't get me wrong. But no thanks, honey. No thanks on the physical touch. Honey, Mel is too mature for me. So then the next thing, we see a joint confessional. I said, not a joint confessional for old time's sake. I said, okay, I see y'all. This is my thing, okay? And I know some of you may not agree with me and this is an unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna state it because the name of the channel is what? In my opinion. All disdain from Martell to the side. I don't ever want these two to get back together, okay? Because what he put her through, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy because I've been through that and worse. I would never, ever advocate for the two of them to be a couple. But why can't men just do right? Honey, why can't they act like they got some sins? I'm sitting here looking at the two of them together. They're such a stunning pair. Like they had a beautiful family and Martell just let selfishness get in the way. Honey, it's really sad. When I saw the two of them in that confessional, I was just like, man. And then I was also wondering, hmm. I wonder what that coleslaw feels about that, honey. I wonder what that mistress feels about them doing this confessional. Because, honey, I thought that they weren't going to be doing nothing together this season. So in the confessional, Martell said he hopes that the therapist isn't biased. Boy, hush, you just want somebody to go along with your foolery. Anybody that goes against you, you feel like they're being biased. Boy, goodbye. I wonder how Arion feels about y'all, honey, and all of this togetherness so they go in to meet the co-parenting expert miss price so she said how are the kids do they need therapists so martel said no i think they're doing great i don't think they need therapy at all it's you know it's no need to insert therapy where it's not needed martel lives in la la land okay he really does so you think that after all of the public things you've gone through the lives that you do before school going from one unit to two separate homes and another sibling they don't need therapy uh, okay show and she's like well Mel what do you think so Mel said I think Martell likes to think like the rest of the black community no therapy and by the time they go it's too late honey agreed I am an advocate for it okay both me and my son go to therapy it's needed because let me tell y'all something my son who's a first grader told me I don't want to talk to dad because he makes you cry and we're a package deal so if he treats you wrong then he treats me wrong now these are the things that are coming out of the mouths of babes. There's no coaching. There's no coercing. But because I want the two of them to have a relationship, I said, you know what? There's some things that he needs to work through. So let's go to therapy. I'm going to go. You going to go. And we going to go together. Honey, kids have emotions as well that they need to work through. So then Mel said their oldest, she's become more reserved. Their five-year-old is writing songs about heartbreak. The son is carrying resentment because he being mean to their mama. Honey, it's a mess. We have to stop with the therapy is for crazy people, therapy for white people. Honey, therapy is for all people who need it. Okay, I just want to put that out there. So then Mel said, you know, when it's time for them to go back with their dad for the night, so then Mel said when it's time for them to go back with their dad the night before it's just a bunch of excuses he's like you know I haven't been doing well you know financially this year and he's like it's a lot I don't feel sorry for him you know why because I have my own Martell that's how they try to manipulate you honey it's narcissism at its finest now Mel is a sweetheart so she's not recognizing it but let me just put this to you like this Martell you're saying this is a lot, right? So is being dragged through the mud and becoming a single mom of four kids while trying to not break down and build several businesses. I mean, I'm just not understanding what you're talking about. Oh, poor Martell. Honey, I do not want to hear that. He said, you know, since he's had them, you know, he can't do as much as he could back then because he's really struggling and he's having a problem. And Mel starts to tear up and she starts to cry and she's really affected by his struggle, right? And she said, you know, her tears were for his struggle. And anytime you see a person that you've loved struggling and you don't get moved, you never love them to begin with. Now, Mel, I'm going to have to agree. Okay. That I don't think that that is entirely true. I was just like you. Okay. When he left and the dust settled, he lost his car, he lost his job. And I would do everything I could to help him. Okay. I would take him where he needed to go because I once did have love for him and to show our son, you know, what it looks like to care for someone, even if they've done something wrong to you. Right. Child, this Negro got back on his feet and I was back to being mistreated, honey. So now I look out for me. 
Okay, that does not mean that you don't love or care about the other person or you never did. It just means that, honey, you made your bed. Now lay in it. That's what it means. Child, goodbye. She's like, you know, I also know that to get out of God's way and allow God to be God. Yes, he will vindicate you. So Martel said, you know, I made my bed. I'm laying in it. But during this hard time, nobody has my back. He said, but, child, but what? So then she tries to console him, right? He's like, back up, Mel. See? <laughs> See? It took all of two seconds. He pushing her off, moving her out the way. Honey, I get that he doesn't want to appear to need her, but emotional support is okay, Martel. It's really okay. So the therapist said, is it hard to accept emotional support from her? He said, yes. So then Mel said, look, I've been there, but you can't stop. You got five kids. Martel is like, we're not talking about them. We're talking about four kids. We're not talking about the five kids. So then in a confessional, Martel was like, you know, the children, they know I cheated because of you. She's like, no, it's because we were arguing all up and through. So then she said, you know, had you kept your penis in the house, we would not be having these issues. We would be fine. He said, no, we wouldn't. She said, you beg me every other week to take you back. She's like, it's okay if you want your wife and family back. He said, I wouldn't even utter those words if it weren't for the kids. Child, Martel. You just saying that because your coleslaw watching and every other side dish that you have. Child, his pride will never allow him to admit that he wants Mel back. And honey, I wouldn't even be bragging about that. Child, I would not even want people to know that he wants me back. Child, because that would mean that he thinks that I'm stupid enough to file for the foolery a 15th year. Child, goodbye, honey. I'd be like, you know what? <laughs> you don't even call me and I love it. Child, goodbye. So Mel said, you know, our kids don't know about the other child and she wants to know when Martel will tell them. Martel's still getting up in arms. He's like, Mel, I don't want to discuss it. Well, you just told Destiny that you have a fifth child. This is the thing. You don't want to hear it because when it comes out of Mel's mouth, it becomes more real. That's what it is. And you know, you can't go back there no more because you know that is the reason, amongst other things, that you are now out on your own. Honey, it's not exciting anymore, is it? Uh, I ain't think so. Boy, anyway. So then Miss Price tells her story about how things went when she presented it to her son during a time where her husband, who is now her ex, had stepped out and had an additional child, right? And she said, the best thing to do is show the kids that you're a teen. Don't lose your teen. And I was like, you know what? Out of all the therapists that have ever graced on stage, Miss Price is the business baby that lady did that honey a word now everything went good right everything went fine for him and here's martel starting problems again her name been out of the building five minutes she's like did you like the session martel he's like yeah it went fine and she was like yeah you know uh we're starting to build he was like oh speaking of building um i heard about you building on the 47 acres he's like you gonna build a house she said i might he said you ain't never built no house she said you ain't built no house either child please do not get mailed up <laughs> Y'all know when that high pitch start is about to be on. And so then he started talking in circles, claiming that, you know, the friendship is this and that. She's like, don't break your friendship up over that. And he's like, oh, I would never do that. Martel, you have no license. She has a license. The builder wanted to work with her. He told you last season that your name is being drugged through the mud so people don't want to be associated with you. And that's just what it is. So Martel was having a fit and she was like, bye Martel, ho. <laughs> And y'all know she trying to be petty and y'all know he didn't got on her nerves when she calls him by his full government name, last name included child. And that was the end of the episode. Let me just tell you something. Martel hates that Mel is excelling without him. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you thought about this episode. Child, next episode is going to be good. I'm trying to figure out why that Tiffany chick is bringing mess all up and through somebody's birthday brunch. And Mel, why did you bring this lady? She know everything about everybody except herself. Child, and as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.